Hello, everyone. My name is Master Ali Kapoor. I would like to welcome you from my home and thank you for allowing us in yours. I'll be your host for today's amazing world's largest Taekwondo class. Are you ready for this? It's going to be amazing. We will get started in less than five minutes. We've got some of the best instructors in the world. Not only are they highly successful world champions, or world rank number one, or Olympians, they actually actively teach or own their own school. So you will get high quality, exciting classes. These classes are meant for everyone, uh, from beginners to high performance. If you're a beginner, we'll walk you through the details. For advanced students, uh, we'll also give you progressions. And remember, watching a world champion move is also part of your training, so watch how they move and break down their techniques for you. First, uh, let me go through the agenda. So first we have a five minute warm up with coach Tim Thackeray, a trainer to Olympians, a club owner, a former US national team member and world medalist himself. Then kicking us off for Pumse 101 for 10 minutes is Master Johnny Wynn. He owns NBTKD in Arizona, is an active sparring athlete, and the May competitor, and just happens to also do Kumse and be a world medal. So what an amazing person to learn from. Wrapping us up for the Kumse will be Master Claire Kim for Kumse 102. Master Kim is a world champion in Kumse, an active instructor in Big J TKD in California, six-time national team member, and was also a national team coach. We'll take a three-minute water break and get right into sparring, and we'll be kicking us off with sparring 101 with Mr. Steven Landon. He was 2016 Olympian for Team USA and is one of the smartest athletes on the map. He will be a treat to learn from. We will finish off with sparring 102 with Master Yvette Young. She is a world rank number one, represents Canada, and is physically one of the best in the world and also a super nice person. Uh, I want to thank all our sponsors and generous supporters. We raised over $5,500, and all these funds will go directly to the frontline workers fighting to uh, fight the coronavirus. Uh, there's still time and an opportunity for you to donate. If you go to tkdkickscorona.com, you uh, you'll be able to donate there, and you'll also get a tax receipt for your donation. And lastly, I want to thank you, the participants, you made the time to join and come together here today, and you are showing the world the value of martial arts, how to break through adversity and come together no matter the differences we have in our beliefs. Okay, everybody ready? Let's get right into it. Coach Tim, kick us off, please, sir. Hey, sir. All right, here we go, everyone. Thank you so much for being here today. We're gonna get right into our mobility and prep for training. Uh, one of the things I've been doing is working with athletes online just like this for a decade in Taekwondo, helping work with some of the Olympians and world champions here. One of the biggest things we're going to focus on today is this middle part of our backs. When we do our Pumse with Master Johnny and Master Claire, their kicks are going to look better. We're not going to have rounding in our backs. Our punches are going to look strong. When we go to our sparring uh, people with uh, Master Vet and Master Steven, you're going to see how the force you create is going to transfer more into our opponents. Two really big things that are going to be critical to long-term success in Taekwondo and to having fun today. The first move here we're going to call is the Samson stretch. What we're going to do is we're going to have our hands up over our head, goes down just a smidge here. I want you to really feel this middle part of your back here. If our arms are all the way up and do it with me, we're going to step out and lunge. And now I'm going to twist toward this front knee. My arms are up. And if they're bent, you won't feel it as much. So try and straighten, straighten, straighten and turn, and that's one, everyone good. Step back, arms are up. Here, step out, lunge, and twist here. And try this right now. Try and bend your elbows a little bit, and you'll feel it's a little less pressure here on the middle part of your back. That's that thoracic part of the spine. From here, arms are up, 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 keep pushing, you'll feel a lock in here, and now twist. You have a lot of rotation to do also, and that's two. Let's do four more. 
up here, lunge and twist. That's three, excellent job. Good job, stepping back, lunge, arms up and really push towards the ceiling and over here and that is four. We have two more times so we're getting better. Lunge up here and if you want, you can even push on that back knee and open up that hip flexor just a little bit. We don't wanna go over, our back's not meant to go in that position really, but right here up and twist is five. And one more time here, lunge and twist. And that's six. Awesome, you're gonna feel that when you see the next drills, our master show how that's gonna help you uh, create some more force in really great kicks. Our second one that is really, really important we do every day with our remote athletes around the world is called our deep squat mobility. It builds on the first parts we just trained. It's gonna start increasing some hip mobility that we need for side kicks, turning kicks, and face kicks. And here's how it goes. From here, everyone get your feet underneath your hips and you're just gonna pick your feet up and put them down there. It keeps our feet from going too wide. And from here, I'm gonna to turn to the side. We're gonna build on what we just did in the thoracic mobility on that Samson stretch. We're gonna send our hips back with our legs straight. Notice my back is flat, right? We don't want that rounding here. When we kick, we don't wanna be in this position. We can't make it look good and there's no force. So from here, hips are back, 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 back. From this position, my legs are straight. Now I'm going to bend my knees and bring my hips down. My heels are in the ground. So if you can do that so far, let's try it from the top. Okay, back flat, legs straight. Hips go back, 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 back. You'll feel it in the hamstrings. That's important for Taekwondo. From here with our back flat, hips come in, heels in the ground. Now it gets fun. Keeping our heels down, you're gonna take your right arm and go all the way up and rotate your torso up to the sky and down and now rotate your left arm up to the sky from here both arms up and what i want you to do is your thumbs are going to point backwards and we'll try this from here when we're down you're going to rotate forwards and see how i have that rounding in my back again turn your thumbs back you see how my thoracic part of my spine locks in and stand up and that's one let's do a couple more from here starting at the top legs straight hips back 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 from here, bend those knees and come down, 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 down. Heels are flat on the ground. Right arm up, good, and down. Left arm up, and again now both arms up. Turn those thumbs back and lock it in straight, and stand, that's two. One more time from here. Hips are going back, 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 back. Knees are coming out and down, push them out with our heels still on the ground. Again, right arm up, all the way. Excellent job, left arm up, all the way. And while you're here, Look up if you have a ceiling above your head right now. We're pretty grateful to still, at a tough situation, have stuff that's taking care of us and making us feel good. Stand up all the way up, and that's three. So we built on the thoracic part of the mobility with single leg mobility. Our second one we did was the deep squat mobility. The last one we do is a really important one. You're gonna see it in some of the stuff I think Master Claire has for you in Pumse 102, and both uh, Master Yvette and Master Steven in their uh, Taekwondo. It's called the seated hip mobility. It will be very challenging for you. It's our last drill and you should be ready to rock. So from here, everyone get back on the ground. Our front leg is gonna bend and this heel is gonna come close to our hamstrings right here. My back leg is gonna bend also. So both my knees are bent. What I do from this position, keeping my chest up because we don't want that rounding in our thoracic spine, we're keeping it upright. From here, my, my back knee comes up. My heels stay close, and I rotate over here. I'm going to bring this knee back up, turn over, and down. So on my count, that's going to be one rep. From here, get in this position. Back knee comes up, rotate over, and down. That's one. No hands on your legs, no turning in. That's the goal. And up, over, and down. That's two. We have six of these. Up. And again, no rounding in, don't let your feet go out, keep them tight. Over, down, that's three. Up, over, down, that's four. You see how challenging this is. It's gonna make your kicks great. We have two more. Up, over, back, and that's five. And always, last one, best one, here we go. Up, over, and down, and that's six. And now we are ready. Everyone here should be set to go. Thank you for letting me get you set today. We have an awesome session for you. I turn over to Master Johnny. Take it away, sir. Sure. Before Master Johnny takes over, I'm going to introduce him for you. Uh, everybody, thank you, sir. That was amazing. You just learned 
from a, a person who coaches Olympians uh, and a former competitor himself, and that's his club that he's standing in right there. So thank you, sir. Decades of knowledge and sports science behind what you just taught us. Okay, now we get straight into Punse. Now remember, these tips are good for mm -hmm. you if you are a white belt, or if you a white belt trying to get to your next strike, or a black belt looking to compete, or if you're a parent or a newbie that just kind of uh, took this class because you heard about it, uh, it also applies to you. Okay, so kicking us off for Punse 101, world medalist, an all-around superstar, master, <laughs> NDTK. Sir, take it away. Appreciate it. How's everyone doing today? Uh, yep, Master Johnny here from NB Taekwondo, uh, Chandler, Arizona. Thanks so much, Mr. Ali, for the warm welcome. Um, thank you, Coach Zachary, for warming us up for Pumse 101. Um, I'm super excited today uh, to share some drills with you guys that you guys can hopefully uh, use and practice after the class on your own, okay? Uh, before we get started, uh, let's get the upper body warmed up a little bit more. Let's get the punching muscles warmed up. So I want everybody, all the students, all the parents, push up position. Meet me on the floor. Let's go. Okay, so in push up position, if this is going to be too tough, uh, let's modify that push up. Go ahead and drop your knees to the floor, okay? So from here, we're going to do a two count. From here, when I say one, you're going to go down. When I say two, you're going to come up. Okay, strengthen that core. When I say one, down. Two, and then up, okay? Stay with me now. Let's do it. Ready? Ready? Hold it. Yeah, three. Up. Three, up, hold it, three, nice, up, three, up, hold it, two, and time. Good job, everybody. Shake out your arms. Uh, take a deep breath. All right, let's see what you guys got. I want to see this time uh, 10 middle punches straight down the pipe, okay? So from punching position, hand on chamber, fist nice and tight. I want to see nice and sharp. A punch, okay? For the stance, you guys can sit in a, a ready stance here, shoulder width, or if you guys are rock stars, double shoulder width apart, horse riding stance, I want 10 punches, okay, with loud key up. Now, you guys are muted on my end, uh, so I'm gonna feel you guys. I can't hear you guys, I wanna feel your energy, okay? So 10, push, uh, 10 punches on my count, ready? And paddle. Paddle means return. All right, take a deep breath. Shake out your arms. Okay, so before we get uh, started into our Pumse specific drills, quick story. Um, so when I started Taekwondo, my master actually taught me how to, when throwing a punch, keeping my arms straight, raising it up, and then punching. So it was an up, down type of motion. Now, this might be similar to what you guys have learned. It might be different, but at the end of the day, there's uh, no wrong way to throw that punch, right? Um, however, in sport pumse, judges are looking for something very specific, right? So if you're off that standard slightly, you're asking for what? A deduction, right? So your score is going to get lower, okay? Uh, funny story, uh, about 25 years ago, I got the chance to uh, move to New Mexico and train under Master Blackman at Blackman Championship Martial Arts. And when I got there, uh, his style was totally different from what I was used to. Um, he actually drilled us in a wide, what is it, a horse stance, kind of back stance hybrid. From here, one hand forward, one hand to the chamber. He would say, one, ah, two, ah, and we drill our punches like this, okay? Uh, fast forward 25 years, and this is the most updated way to throw your punch in Sport Pumse, okay? So shout out to Master Blackman in New Mexico uh, for being ahead of the curve. Hopefully, you guys are doing well, you and Mrs. B. Um, hopefully you guys are watching, okay? All right, so again, the most updated way to throw the punch in Sport Pumse is by bending your arm slightly. The aiming arm must bend, okay, at the elbow. And then from there, relaxing your body and explode, okay? So we're going to drill that, and we're going to do a two count. So let's start here. Um, as for stance, it's up to you, regular stance or horse riding stance. When I say hana, elbow is going to bend slightly, okay? When I say jure, Execute. Okay, so hana, bend, three, and strike. Okay, so hana, bend. Awesome. Three, punch. Okay, hana, bend. Body should be relaxed. Okay, zero to a hundred. Ready? Hundred, boom. Zero, relax. Hundred, boom. One more time. Hana, and two. Okay, I want you guys to do this uh, 10 times on your own. Now, for those with a little bit more experience, uh, more advanced Pumse practitioners out there, uh, let's pick a stance, maybe a front stance, okay? Deep stance here, 
We're gonna get into punching position. Same thing, the hand's gonna bend on Hana, and on tour, we're gonna punch, okay? Twisting your uh, thoracic part of your spine, like Coach Zachary mentioned, okay? That's very important in sport kumse, especially when you're punching uh, with the opposite hand, twisting over, okay? So from here, we bend, and then punch. Bend, punch. So Hana, bend, two, punch, okay? I want 10 times on your own. Go ahead, pick a stance. I'll change the angle for you guys a little bit from here. Bending one, boom. Bending one, boom. Bending one, three. Bending, four. Bending, five. Good. Bending, six. Bending, seven. Bending, eight. Nine. Last one. Bending and snap. Okay, very good. Um, to increase your strength um, and that snap and that range of motion, uh, let's make sure we pull back that shoulder uh, before we punch, okay? So from here, not stiff punching like this, but make sure you're twisting back and then punching, okay? Twist, punch, twist, punch, twist, and then punch. All right, excellent, okay. Um, let's move on to blocks, okay? So uh, what's the first basic block that you see in Tego Pumse? Yes, Aremaki, down block, okay, down block. So down block will start uh, from the shoulder, okay? Uh, so it's really important, the palm of your fist should not be on the shoulder. The hammer fist of your fist should not be on the shoulder. Actually, the back of your hand or knuckles should be on the shoulder, fully rotated for a full rotation, okay? So that back hand of your fist should be touching the shoulder, one hand out, okay? This hand's gonna snap back to the chamber and blocking this way, okay? Chamber hand comes up. Back of the hand on the shoulder. So this is not enough rotation. Rotate all the way around and snap. Okay, relax your body zero. Same thing, thoracic rotation there. Boom, up, boom, up, boom, up, boom. Okay, I want 10 times on your own real quick. Um, go ahead and pick a stance as well. Make me horse riding stance. Uh, the ready stance for the beginners, but more advanced. How about, let's try deep stance, right? Deep stance down block, ready, one. Okay, then switch, two, or from horse riding stance, hana, three, bam, hana, set, three, bam, hana, set, three, bam, hana, set, three, very good. Okay, quick tip on how to get a, a couple more presentation points uh, during Pumse competition. So for me, um, when I do my down block, it's kind of a mix between a swipe and a punch and a strike at the same time, right? If you just swipe, sometimes there's, there's that extra uh, residual movement there, right? So we want to hit that block and stop, pop your body. So from here, I'm swiping and kind of punching at the end, right? So from here, stop. Okay, swipe and then ah, extend the tricep, pop that down block, okay? Quick tip for you guys. All right, um, the next drill we're going to do um, with that down block um, is a drill that we do called around the world, okay, around the world. So from here... Uh, we would pick a stance, okay? We would pick a block, and then from there, uh, we would perform those techniques two times going forward, two times going to other, the other direction, so to the left, backwards, and then to the other side. So for example, if you're doing a front stance, down block, we would start with the left hand first. I would do two blocks going forward. So that's one, and that's two. From there, I'd lift my back leg up, chamber hand comes up to my shoulder, one, then two, okay? Now, same thing from here. Back leg is gonna move up. One, and two, okay? Again, back leg moves up. One, two. Then from there, finish up with key up. Ah! That is the around the world drill. So for you guys, uh, the last minute or so here, I want you guys to uh, choose a stance. So if you have more experience, maybe a uh, back stance, maybe a single knife hand, right? So back stand, single knife hand. One, two, take it this way. One, two, take it this way. One, two, and so forth. Or a more challenging technique, maybe scissor block. I know my students have uh, some trouble doing the scissor block, right? Going forward from type of seven, huh? Uh, uh, uh. Okay, so one time around the world, okay? Let's choose uh, what kind of technique, what kind of stance you want to use. Uh, for beginners, stick with me. Let's try down block one more time, okay? Ready? One, two, turning, one, and two, turning, one, two, turning, one, 
two, and finish with Chip. Ah! Awesome, and let's return. All right, guys, I think that's my time. So thank you guys so much for having me. Uh, most importantly, it's for, this is for a great cause. Uh, thank you, Mr. Ali, for inviting me to be a part of the panel. And uh, make sure everyone at home stays strong and healthy, especially the kids. Uh, make sure when you guys are at home, be team players. I want you guys to help around the house uh, so that mom and dad can get done whatever they need to do, okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right. <laughs> amazing, amazing. Master Johnny, thank you. Those are some amazing tips. Uh, to help anyone uh, get better again for your next belt test or competition, or even if you just this is your first introduction to Taekwondo, uh, you know, you just got taught by a world champion, and uh, hopefully, you enjoy that. And uh, okay, so up next, Pumsei 102 from another world champion, Master Claire Kim. Ma'am, please take it away. Thank you, Master Ali. Thank you for the introduction. And thank you, Mr. Johnny, for introducing um, kind of basic elements for sports Pumse. Welcome, everybody. My name is Claire Kim. I'm excited to have you guys with us today uh, as fellow martial artists. Um, what I want to do is I want to take Master Johnny's information and level it up. Now, part of sports Pumse is having an amazing, extensive knowledge of some of your basic taekwondo elements, such as the blocks, such as uh, punches, such as having proper positioned stances. Um, now, there's a lot of information out there, but today I want to give you a couple of tips on how to take all these different elements and make them fuse together. Part of sports Pumse is to really have a clean, beautifully performed, powerful uh, performance in essence. All right, so I have got a couple of tips for you guys. So join in in what we're doing, and I think it's going to help you level up in your Pumse game. My first tip for you is this. As we kick, where do these hands go? You know, when we do the low block, we know exactly what we're doing, right? However, when we do a front kick or a side kick, these hands often go in different directions because we're not paying attention. So the tip is for, for you, these hands have to be tucked in close to your chest. Do that with me from wherever you are. Grab those hands and bring them in. Now, you don't, you don't need to hit yourself. Don't hit yourself. Just pull them in, whether it is this way or a little bit upwards. Either way is fine. So come join me in a fighting stance. We're gonna do a couple of these together, all right? So join me in a just a regular kicking fighting stance, all right? You guys ready? So every kick we're gonna, we're gonna do simple front kick. Just bring those hands in like this, okay? Just like that, all right? On my count, let's do a couple together, ready? And one, right? I have my hands really close to my chest. Try that again, two. Very good. Three. Four. Now, please be aware, a lot of times students do this. Take a look at my hands. I see a lot of students go like this. Did you guys see my hands went up and they tucked down? And this is something sometimes you might not be aware of. So parents, when you're coaching and when you're helping your kids, make sure you keep an eye on that. They should just come straight back to your chest, okay? All right, switch your legs with me. We've got to make sure we're balanced on each side, right? So relax those arms, relax your shoulders, and just bring your hands in gently. Ready? And one. Two. Three. And four. Excellent. Very good. All right. So now that we know how to kick, now that we know how to punch, let's put all these elements together. All right, so during your punse, a lot of times we're combining a front stance low block with a kick and a punch. So what happens if I have a kick and then I need to follow up with a punch? Very simple, just follow what we just talked about in the last 15 minutes. Now, as you already know, the resting position for your arm between the punches is just like this. You know, your hand is a little bit tilted. It could be straight up. I like, I prefer this version. Master Johnny does this a little bit. Neither one is going to deduct your points. However, you want to relax this arm. All right, so let's put it together. Everybody join me. Pick up one leg, just like that. And we, we're all martial artists, so we know how to balance this. Keep the knee up. Bring the 
and set up for the relaxed position for your punch. Okay, let me show you what it looks like from the side, just like that. All right, so I want your body to get used to pulling right muscles for this position, okay? Let's switch legs, pick up the other leg. Same thing, now we were here for the kick, but let's bring up the opposite arm in the relaxed position. Chamber, and also like Master Johnny said, open up your chest so I can actually give my punch enough space to have a powerful strike, all right? So let's do that again, we're gonna switch a couple more times, ready? Bring up one knee, chamber, bring the shoulder back, squeeze. Hold it here, make sure your standing leg is nice and straight. You don't wanna be down here, you wanna be upright with your chest forward, your chin forward, looking straight ahead, okay? Switching legs, I'll show you from the side, ready? Bring your knee up, opposite arm relaxed, because I'm relaxing so I can get ready to strike. All right, let's put everything together. Join me in a fighting stance. All right, so we're gonna combine everything. We're gonna tuck our hands in. I'm gonna balance, and I want you to stop here with me. All right, let's do that one more time. From the fighting stance, ready, set, go. Kick, pull, and hold it. Beautiful, let's do a couple more. One more time, fighting stance. Ready, and go. Kick, pull. Excellent. So once we have this position, now we can follow up with landing and striking at the same time. All right, let's put it together. Hands up. Are you guys all in a fighting sense? Very good, all right, join in. We're gonna kick, tuck our hands in, chamber, hold it there for a second, and follow up with the punch. Let's do it together, ready, and go. Do one more time. Ready? Fighting stance. Set. Go. Beautiful. One last time. Ready? Hands up. Set. You know what? Let's actually start from a front stance because this is a little bit more realistic for the pumsas that you are working on at your doja, right? So big front stance. Stand up tall, tuck the hands in. Ready? Set. Go. Kick. Pull back, double punch. Just like that. What form do we see this in? Taeguk Samjang. We see some of it in Taeguk Ijang, Taeguk Iljang, all these different forms, all right? Let's do it one last time, and then I want to share with you my tip number three. Okay, last one. Hands down. Let's see if you guys can do it without my help. Set, go. Just like that. Excellent, all right. My tip number three for you is this. Now, Master John already talked about relaxing one arm, and that's really important. We really want to combine doing powerful movements with resting movements. Maybe resting is not the right word. However, when I chamber and set up for my middle block, this middle block setup really does not need to be powerful. I don't want to jerk my arm back, right? Everything should be soft so I can execute powerfully here. Right, soft, execute powerfully here. Same with the high block. I don't wanna do this hard. I wanna relax, twist, and block. Same thing with the other side. I don't wanna jerk this motion, just like that, right? So let's do, um, let's do a couple of low blocks together, and I want you to keep in mind to really just soften up the setup to block. Soften up the setup to block. Let's do it together. Ready? Set it up. One, two. Again. One, two. One, two. One, two. One, two. Great. Good job. So let's put that in an actual form. Now we have the example of low block, kick, double punch. Take a look at how I do my low block. All right. I'm going to. Travel to my left, because that's kind of how we do a lot of our punsas, okay? Take a look at my low block, ready? Do you guys see? I did not jerk my hand up. It was a very soft, relaxed application, so I can use all my power towards when I'm actually blocking or striking, all right? So join me, we're gonna do this one more time. Actually, I'm gonna come towards you this time. Ready? Soft, one. Kick, double punch, ready, go. Kick and double punch. 
One last time. Ready? Two feet. Set. Go. And one. Soft set up, right? Power here. Tuck those hands in. Relax. Power at the end. Okay? If I were to apply this to my black belt, many of you guys are black belts, the same concept applies. Whether you're doing Koryo or Tebek or any of the other amazing forms, take a look at my Tebek beginning, all right? Tebek beginning starts like this. Did you guys see I did not jerk my arms? I had a soft part, which was set up, and then I had the execution, which was powerful. In my head, a lot of times I go, okay, one, breathe in, exhale, breathe out. And that's where my power goes, okay? So for Tebe, for example, it should look something like this. Relax, strike, kick, relax, double punch. Let's do that again. Now, if you're not a black belt, go ahead and repeat low block kick, double punch, all right? Let's do two more versions of that. Ready, Chibi? Set. Remember, really soft but clean setups. It's all about knowing where your hands need to be. Ready, set, go. One last time, just to drill it in one more time to me. Ready, set, go. Hello, very good. Guys, I hope these tips are helpful to you, and I hope that these tips will really entice you to train even harder in your Pumse game. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm Master Claire Kim. I'm gonna send it back to you, Master Ali. Thank you, man. Thank you for sharing your amazing tips with us. How was your Pumse 102 class, everyone? You just got taught from a world champion. I think that's a pretty good lesson we just learned there. Um, thank you again, ma'am. Okay, we're gonna take a three minute water break, okay? Um, what a treat uh, to learn from these guys. Master Johnny Wynn, that was a great intro. Master Claire, that was amazing technique and form. You can just see the difference in uh, their technique, you know, compared to uh, definitely my technique. Um, oh, and you have a chance actually to ask all these instructors, instructors questions at the end. So there is going to be a Q&A at the end of this. So after uh, Missy Yvette Young uh, finishes her session with Sparring 102, we'll all get together and uh, we can ask them questions. And just as a reminder, everybody, this is a martial art session. Please be very respectful in the comments, okay? Now, how's everyone feeling? Did you feel something new? Did you learn something new? <laughs> I know I felt something new when I tried to do one of those squats, just one. Um, if you can learn, uh, if you can walk away and learn just one thing from, uh, from this seminar, then uh, it was worth your time. The next, section, the next sex session sorry, will be about sparring which will also be amazing because we have an Olympian and a world rank number one who are ready and pumped to teach you. Um, okay, now this message is to all those people here and participating. You know, you're doing something very important today. You think you might be just taking a class, but what you're actually doing is you're showing the world what we can do when we come together when things get hard. You have two choices when things get hard. You can run towards the problem, or run away from it. Thank you for being an example to the world of showing what it is to run towards the problem. Just like the people running towards the problem of fighting the coronavirus on our behalf, which are the frontline workers. What we're doing today is showing them our support for what they're doing. And we've done that through our time and the actual donations that we've given them. So, <clears throat> Time is actually a finite resource, right? By being here, you uh, showed other people that we're gonna persevere through this. And we are um, doing this together. Thank you so much. Well done, everyone. Um, we're, we're raising the money for it. It's actually Doctors Without Borders. All the money is going to the frontline workers. Um, and we have raised, the number is over $5,700 so far. That's amazing. We have over 1,500 people registered. There's 1,000 people on right now. Those other 500 people are gonna to have to do push-ups, virtual push-ups afterwards, okay? Um, that's quite a lot of folks. Uh, we will uh, make this video available afterwards for them to, to watch it. And we'll give you the final reports when, once everything is complete. Um, by the way, that, that $5,700 will buy about 20,000 masks. 
That's amazing. So our frontline workers will appreciate you. Well done, everyone. Master Emerson, do you mind putting up the slide? We've got one more minute for your water break. I want to thank uh, a few people that made some things happen for us here. Um, yeah, so these, these folks right here, okay, um, they put in quite a lot of money and quite a lot of time. Uh, so I want to uh, mention them. They're all actually very relevant to the martial arts space for a, a few reasons. Um, they're, first of all, they're all small business owners. They've been impacted by the coronavirus uh, as well, and, but they still made an effort to donate. Uh, if you're in need for any of these types of services, please reach out to them and support a small business. Uh, and we didn't just let anyone become sponsors. These are cream of the crop. Uh, Juice Compound, they do remote coaching. You've got a taste of what uh, Coach Tim Thackeray just did. High quality stuff. Uh, 2020 Armor, that's my company. We provide martial arts scoring vests for your school, home training, and high performance teams. It's great for generating re revenue for club owners. And also you can uh, have your own and make your training better at home as an individual practitioner. Prime IP, they actually do all our intellectual property and it's run by Master Marcelo Sarkis. He's an expert in the field of martial arts, but also patent law. And uh, if you need IP services, he's the person to go to. Block Insurance, Miss Beth Block. Uh, she is just uh, amazing. No stranger to the martial art world. If your club owner needs to talk to someone about uh, insurance, she's a person you go to. Um, Spark. These guys know their stuff. They provide best in class software for your martial arts school. The owners are very successful school owners themselves. So they know exactly what should go into a system for clubs. Pulse Taekwondo, the man running the whole thing behind the scenes that this is going on, Master Emerson Wong, an expert in martial art training, video stunts, XMA. Please check to see if you're close by any of his schools and visiting his link. And then lastly, across, uh, if you need any martial arts supplies, uh, these are the guys to go to in Canada. Again, a company run by martial artists who are passionate about what they do. Uh, and top-notch customer service. So please take the time to visit their website and learn more about them. All right, Master Emerson, back to me, please. All right, here I am, great. Okay, you guys ready? Sparring, 101, up first, 2016 Olympian representing Team USA, Master Stephen Landon. Sir, take it away, please. I'll mute myself, there we go. Hey gang, uh, first of all, thanks for the awesome introduction. I, I'd like to pay to have you fly around with me and just hype me up before matches. It's got me feeling good. Uh, that being said, so in this 10 minutes, we're actually going to keep it really simple today um, for a couple of reasons. First of all, obviously, we've got a wide range here. Like we've got some white belts, we've got some world class athletes. So that way we can a little bit cater to everybody, but more importantly, actually, is we're going to focus on fundamentals because it doesn't matter if you have an awesome 360 to the face, fall out of the clinch, I score five points in this one weird situation. If you don't have a good roundhouse kick, it doesn't matter what the rest of it is, right? Because we have to win the basic matches before we can get to that final, before we can get to the finals at World Championship, right? Like you've got to, you've got to win the U.S. Open first. So that being said, Let's go ahead and get started. Uh, for those of you that are new, we'll walk through this one real quick. Uh, we're going to work roundhouse kick first. So we're going to break it down into three parts. First, we're going to go knee up. Second, knee over. Third, extend. Very simple. It is just that simple, but to do it world class is where it gets a little bit trickier. So let's go ahead and walk through it with me, please. Knee up, turn over, roundhouse kick. I'm actually going to make sure I start my timer so that way I don't run over. One more time, please. Knee up, turn over, extend. Nice and simple. Right leg, we started left, let's start right leg now. Knee up, turn over, extend. Two more. Knee up, turn over, extend. Last one for you. Knee up, turn over, extend. Now we're going to start to make it a little bit more dynamic. So we're going to get in our fighting stance. We're going to go left leg back first. We're going to make sure we have our hands up. A couple of things we're going to focus on. We're going to stay tall. I don't want to see this. We, we all fight those tall people that throw cut kicks, so we're no longer down here. We're good and tall, and we're keeping our core nice and braced. On my count, first three, nice and smooth, a little bit easy. We're going to build an intensity. So get set, no bouncing just yet. Get set, one. Nice, nice and easy. This one a little bit more intense. Get set. 
two. Last easy one, ready? Three. There you go. Now these next three, a little more intense. This is a match, right? We've got to win the Olympics or win national, win regionals, win that local tournament, whatever it is. We got to win that before we get to the show, right? So now we're bouncing, a little bit more intense on my count. Ready? One. Reset. Hands up. Two. Reset. Last one, best one. This is the Go World Championships. You have to score this. Ready? Three. There we go. Nice. Switch stance. We're going to go right leg first. Ready? One. Nice and easy. A little bit more intense. Two. There you go. Reset. Last one. Making sure we got the technique down nice and smooth. Ready? Three. Now, this is a match. We got to win. We have to score. Ready? One. Reset. Two. Reset. Last one, best one, as we said. Get set. Three. There you go. Nice work, guys. What I want you to make sure and focus on on those brown house kicks is when you take off, the work isn't done. Your baseline still needs to be driving into that kick. So that was the most basic version. And theoretically, we were lifting. Uh, we just went through like an air squat. So no weight. Now we're going to start to add a little bit of a load to it. How do we add a load to our kicks? Put on a big heavy weight vest. No. We're going to add just a little bit of movement beforehand, so that way we have to decelerate and then explode into our kick. All right. So for this first one, what we're going to do, we're going to close the distance. I want you to imagine I'm too far away to hit this person. I can't reach him. I have to move before I can kick. So we're going to get set. We're going to slide forward. Then we're going to follow with a roundhouse bit. What you want to focus on here is, notice, my feet don't come together. My feet stay apart, closed, round kick. We keep our feet apart so that way, no matter what, I can stop and kick. So, three easy ones, three a lot harder. Okay? Get set, ready. One. There you go. Make sure you get the motion, feet move at the same time. Ready. Two. There you go. Nice and easy. One more easy one. Then we're going to take up the intensity. Three. There you go. Now the three intense ones. We've got the pattern down. Now we're going to rock. Ready. Four. There you go. Reset. Get set. Arms. Five. Last one. Best one. Get set. Six. There you go. Switch legs. We're going to go right leg now. Remember, first three, make sure you've got it down right. Get set. One. Reset. Two. Reset. Last easy one. Make sure you've really got the technique down. That's the most important thing. Three. There you go. Now we're in the intense one, so we want to raise the intensity here. Ready? One. Reset. Two. Last one, best one, right? Make sure we've got our hands. This is a match. It has to be real in your mind if you want it to come out during the ring. Ready? Three. Nice work, guys. So, if moving like that is adding a load theoretically, we're going to make it a little bit harder. So for that one, we slid in, we got close to him, then we kicked him. This one, we're going to slide back and then kick him. So we're going to get out of the way of their kick. It doesn't matter if it's a cut kick, whatever. We're going to get out of the way of it, then we're going to tag him. A couple of things we're going to focus on here, though. When I move back, first of all, I don't go up, right? You're not going to chop your head off on the camera like I am. None of that. We're going to move fast and to where we're trying to go. So, quick into the ground so we can explode out. It doesn't matter if you have the world's greatest roundhouse kick if the movement beforehand is terrible. That's 
if we're fighting and I do this, roundhouse kick, all you have to do is kick when I move. We're not going to be that guy. So we'll get set. We'll go right leg in front first, and we're kicking left. Same fundamentals for roundhouse kick. Staying tall. Keep our floor nice and tight, right? So we're going to get set. First three, nice and easy. Ready? One. Reset. Two. Yep, there we go. Last easy one. Three. Nice. A little more intense now. Really get into the ground, right? The more force you can put into the ground, the harder you're going to be able to take off into that kick. None of this. We're elite level athletes now, so move as fast as you can. Ready? One. There you go. Get set. Two. Last one, best one. Three. There you go. Switch stance. We're going to go right leg now. Nice and easy for the first three. Ready? One. Make sure we're getting into the ground and then changing directions. Set. Two. Last easy one, and it's going to get harder. Ready? Three. All right. Super intense. If you want to win an Olympic gold medal, starts right here. Ready? One. Reset. Two. Explode into that kick. This one especially, once you get set, really take off. It's a sprint. You you gotta get to the target as quick as you can. Ready? Three. There you go. Nice. We're gonna do one more set. This time we're gonna put it together. Most complicated one. We're gonna go roundhouse, put it down, pop back, roundhouse. We're getting warm, we've got the pattern. Straight into the intense rounds. Ready? One. Reset. Two. Last one. Three. There we go. Switch stance. Right leg this time, please. Ready? One. Two more. We're in the match. Take off, score the point, and get out of the way. Three. Oh, that was two, I think. You know what? We're going to do one more just because I miscounted. Ready? One. Eh, that one wasn't good enough. I don't like my standard. We have too high of a standard, right? So, uh, that wasn't a good rep. We can't finish like that. One more. Ready? One. There we go. All right. Coming to the end of my time, unfortunately. It's hot here, but on top of it, keeping a lot of effort, so I'm all sweaty and ready to take a shower. That being said, guys, I want to take the opportunity not only to thank you guys for coming, but if you can't donate, that's okay. Reach out to a medical professional that you know, even if it's on Facebook, let them know that you support. The important thing is that as a Taekwondo community, we come together in time of trial, and that's what this is all about. So thank you guys very much for your time, and throw it back to Master Ali. Wow. Wow, there you have it, folks. Your lesson from Mr. Olympian, Mr. Steven Landon, from his garage into your home. What an amazing opportunity we have here, right? Uh, sir, thank you for those amazing insights. <clears throat> I, to make sure uh, you guys focus, we only allow the chat to go to the panelists. We will open it up during the Q&A, okay? Now, for your last session, this girl who's behind me, but also gonna be in front of you, uh, she is world ranked number one representing Team Canada, Miss Yvette Young. Ma'am, please take it away. Hey guys, can everybody hear me? Thank you so much, Stephen, uh, Master Lambden, for doing our Sparring 101. He took you through a lot of the uh, foundations of Taekwondo, the foundations of kicks, which I think are super, super important. Um, so now I'm going to take you through Sparring 102. All right, so let me ask you a question first. How many of you can kick? Everybody can kick, right? Sure. Now, the important thing is how do we move to get to where you want to kick, whether it be a target or whether it be your opponent. So one thing that is important is actually two things, footwork and agility. 
I think those, these two are very important skills you should train because think about it. A match is two minutes long and three rounds. That's six minutes of fighting. All right, so let me ask you another question. How many of you have fought a game and come out and forget everything that happened? I'm guilty of that. And do you know why this happens? It's because we spend too much time thinking about what we should be doing rather than reacting to it. So in today's lesson, I would like to focus on footwork and slowly add on to it as we get comfortable with our movements. All right. So I've broken it down for beginners to advance. So what we're going to start off with is stepping. Okay. So one thing we're going to be doing is for beginners, if you don't want to go back and forth like this, that's fine with me. You can stay here on the spot and move back and forth. All right. And for you advanced people, I want you to do two steps or even three. So what we're gonna be doing is one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. If you wanna make it even more harder, let's do three. One, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, three. All right, so while you guys are doing that right now, I'm gonna explain what we're gonna be doing. When you are in your rhythm, I like to do two step. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. The body is gonna get used to that rhythm. And I want you to be able to break that rhythm because in a fight, there is no rhythm. A fight can come with two kicks at you, bouncing really slow, slow and a fast kick. There is no rhythm in a fight. So you guys have to learn how to break that kind of rhythm, okay? So as you guys are bouncing, I will be clapping the targets. When you hear the targets clap, you guys have to switch right away and get back into your stepping, okay? We're gonna start with that simple, plain and easy first. All right, put on some tunes. Let's go guys, dancing. One, two, one, two, one. Oh yeah. Dancing. Oh yeah. Get back into the rhythm guys. Feel that disco beat. One, two, I'm gonna do the beginner version now. Dancing. Bouncing. Yeah. Now advance. One, two, three. 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 Two, three. One, two, three. Yeah. Woo! Let's go, guys. Yeah. Keep your feet moving. Fast. Don't anticipate it. Listen. Yeah. All right. Woo. Let me turn that down. Woo. That got me going. The music got me going. All right. So now that we're comfortable with moving our feet with our footwork, we're going to be adding kicks to it. Okay. So for beginners, you're bouncing like this. When I clap the targets, switch, back leg, just like Master Stephen Lambton said, knee up and down, all right? You can go straight back into that step. So you're bouncing, clap, switch, kick, back into your step, all right? Really fast. For advanced, you're gonna do doing two steps. One, two, one, two, clap, boom. One, two, one, two. More advanced, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. At any time, I'm gonna clap the targets, switch, kick. All right, if you want to as well, add a low and a high. Doesn't matter to me, low, high, as fast as you can, and get right back into your stepping. All right, here we go, guys. Back with the beats. Let's go. One, two, one, two, two. Oh yeah, one, two, one, two. You can try different angles as well. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. If you want to, you can add a double.
you guys but I'm sweating already <laughs> all right so now we've learned to do our stepping our footwork switching and kicking now I want to add something okay so everybody knows how to move with your feet all around but how do we get the opponent to do a mistake what we're gonna do is a fake okay how can you work on your fake look at yourself in the mirror when you have time Hear somebody clap and do a kick. The very first motion that you do before that kick is your fake. All right, so for me, I'm bouncing. I hear something, I react. That is the beginning of my kick, and that should be my fake. All right, so I want everybody to try. Bouncing, fake, bouncing. When I clap the targets, you guys do your fakes. All right, ready? Bouncing, just on the spot is fine. Bouncing, yeah. Bouncing, yeah. All right, one more time. Bouncing, yeah. Make it really fast. It has to look real. Ready? Bouncing, yeah. All right, one more time. Bouncing, yeah. So, faking is trying to catch your opponent off guard. When they do, they caught off guard. What do you think they do next? They look at their opponent and they mimic their movements. And that is how you control your opponent's movements. All right. Oh, I'm out of breath now. <laughs> um, next thing I wanna do is working on angles, all right? So, holding your form, think about it as a T, like this, all right? Foot is in front, that's the middle of the T. You're gonna be bouncing. When I hit the target, the foot in the middle stays. Your back leg's gonna turn right over here. Let's start bouncing again. Hit the targets, bounce again. Hit the targets, again. All right, I really want you to react fast like this. If you want to add as well, you're bouncing, fake, sideways, fake, sideways. Fake sideways. All right, four corners, guys. Here we go. Woo. And the beats go on. Let's go. Bouncing. I want to see everybody's fake. Hey yeah. Hey yeah. Hey yeah. Bouncing. Hey yeah. All right. Let's fake these guys out. Hey yeah. Let's switch our legs now. The other one's gonna be in the middle. Bouncing. Hey -ya. Hey -ya. Hey -ya. Hey -ya. And if you guys want to add, add a kick too after the fake. Bounce. Ready? Big, back. You can do a front leg, you can do a back leg, whichever you want, okay? Bouncing. Big, back, boom. Think back, back leg. Think back, high. Think back, double. Woo! All right, guys. I really hope you learned something. I learned that I'm out of breath in just 10 minutes. <laughs> um. Yeah, so it's end of my session. Welcome to uh, my bedroom. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, I'm gonna give it back to Allie here. <laughs> that was so energetic, just like you. <laughs> oh, that was that was really fun. Thank you. What a treat that was, Miss Young. Uh, she was amazing, wasn't she? Uh, there's a reason why she's ranked world number one. Um, you should YouTube some of her matches. Uh, she's just uh, out of this world. Okay, uh, how fun was that, guys? Right? Uh, we had some great, great, great quality instruction there. And now is your chance to talk directly to these amazing instructors, okay? Uh, Master Emerson, do you mind putting us on gallery view and let's open up those chats? And if you have a question, 
please send it to the panelists and we will pick it. And um, we'll leave that, uh, the Q&A open for these instructors. And you can ask something about their personal journey, uh, maybe a burning question you had about specifically something about your sparring or kumse, or just a nice message to them. Um, please uh, do that. Uh, sir, are we on gallery view? Let's unmute everybody um, <clears throat> as well. Perfect, everyone unmuting, all right. Um, okay, oh yeah, sorry, for those who want to donate, please go to tkdkickscorona.com. Uh, if you scroll down uh, near the bottom, there's a link that says donate. Please, uh, please do that there. Okay, um, let's see, there's quite a lot of questions happening. <laughs> try to slow, okay, so I'm gonna try to pick one here, okay. How do you recommend, oh, this is a good question. Um, maybe we'll uh, let Mrs. Yvette Young catch her breath. Uh, and we'll ask uh, Mr. Stephen Landon. Uh, how do you recommend practicing sparring when you are solo? Yeah, no, that's a super pertinent question considering what's going on, right? Um, it doesn't matter if you're kicking targets, whether you're in practice against somebody, kicking a bag, or at home by yourself. It has to be real in your mind. Right? Like, if I sit there and I tell you, I'll give you $10,000 if you can kick this paddle out of my hand, you're gonna try super hard, right? Because it's, it, you have money in your hand, you understand like, okay, I get what a dollar is, I get what a hundred dollars is, oh, maybe it's on you more, who knows, I'm not gonna judge. But, uh, it has to be that real in your mind. If you wanna go to the Olympics, then we have to be practicing every single kick like it's that finals at Olympic qualifiers. And so, yeah, it's real difficult, but what you have to understand is that what separates a world-class athlete from your average Joe that, oh, I, I didn't make it to the Olympics because it was too political. It's like, what separates those two isn't necessarily talent or even the amount of time they put on, put into their, put into their training. What separates them is how real it is in their mind. So you have to make it so real that you can literally taste it. Great response, great response, sir. Thank you. Um, Brandon Miller, uh, I'll pass this to Miss Claire Kim. What are you most thankful for right now? Um, thank you for the question. You know, I think with um, everybody having to stay at home and we're all a little disconnected from each other, um, I actually did a little video, video on, you know, feeling lonely and um, feeling disconnected from our, from our community. And the one thing that I did wasn't able to mention is I'm actually very grateful right now for my family. Um, they're the ones who keep me sane. They're the ones who encourage me. They're the ones who cheer for me. And I have to be honest, actually during this time, I feel like I've gotten to know them better because I'm spending much more time with them. We're cooking together, we're going for walks together, we're training together. And so I'm grateful for that. And obviously my health, um, I'm very grateful that I, I'm safe in the place that I am. And um, I'm grateful for all of you Techland friends as well. So. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. We've got over 100 questions. We cannot get to them all. Uh, we will do as much as we can. Um, uh, we're coming near to the end. We'll, we'll keep the questions going because there's uh, quite a lot of folks here. We are, on, we are on time. So thank you, instructors, for keeping on schedule and Master Emerson Wong for keeping us all on schedule. Uh, Missy, that young, this one's for you. This is from someone you might know. It also has your same last name, Yvonne Young. <laughs> what do you say when you kick? It sounds like banana. I don't know if you guys saw that, but I posted a video of my sister uh, doing her first Taekwondo kick. And, you know, my sister and a brother-in-law are just <laughs> funny people. And honestly, she's been the best sister to me and has guided me throughout all my, my journey through, through life, uh, through Taekwondo, through everything. So. <laughs> yes, family is very important to you as well. I mean, as, as Miss Claire Kim said as well, you know, uh, being um, locked in our homes uh, forces us to uh, remember how important family is, whether they're in the same home with us or not. Uh, it is a very important time to, to remember that. Uh, Miss, Miss Young, on, on the topic of sparring, um, how do you manage your energy from beginning to end? This is from uh, Kat Kakit Yik. How do I manage my energy? Well, I gotta say all my energy comes from my mom. If you guys have met her, she is just a ball of energy. Um, she has always been my inspiration. 
throw a life throughout Taekwondo and in a fight too. So I always think of her um, and all the, the things she's gone through it and, and all the, you know, sacrifices she's done for all her kids and all her, um, all the years that I've been in Taekwondo, being there at every competition, um, you know, supporting me with however she can. So my mom is my inspiration and I think about her when I'm fighting. That's great. Yeah, great. So find that source of energy that gets you through. That's fantastic. Um, Master Johnny Nguyen, for yourself, uh, this is from Master Cheng. How can I have a 180 degree Kumse sidekick? What does he need? <laughs> <laughs> so the 180 degree sidekick, I think you have to ask Master Claire about that one. Uh, mine's not quite 180 degrees, um, but obviously you have to do uh, dynamic stretching, a mix of dynamic stretching and static stretching. Um, all day and every day uh, to kick high, especially in Pumse, uh, you need reputation and you need time and, and you need to sacrifice some time to, to practice on that. So throwing uh, your side kick, repping it out, and also dynamic and static stretching for that side kick. I wish I had a 180 degree side kick. <laughs> <laughs> it is very hard, but it, like anything, uh, to get to the level that you guys are all at, it's practice. Uh, these guys, who, you know, they don't just wake up and become world champions. Uh, they work very very hard this is a, a nice one for everybody uh at what age did you get your black belts i'll start i started taekwondo at 13 and got my black belt at 16. Uh, master johnny when did you get yours uh for me i started when i was five years old i got my black belt at 12 so it took me quite a while about seven years to get my black belt okay mr stephen uh one year one year earlier than a vet <laughs> okay <laughs> she started when she was two i think <laughs> yeah, started I in the it, womb. I was actually born with the belt, so I can't really say. <laughs> well, wh how old were you when you started, though? Uh, I started when I was five. I want to say I got my black belt when I was 12, but I started competing at black belt super young. So, Okay. Miss Claire? I uh, started at around five, and it took about, I think, four years or so to get to black belt. Okay. And Miss Young? Oh, I started at nine years old and I got my black belt, I think my poom belt at like 12, 12 or 13. Okay. And Coach Tim? Uh, yeah, I started early. Both my parents are black belts and, you know, grandmaster instructors, but didn't start classes until I was like five. And then I didn't take it so seriously when I was around eight. So they made me start over my belt again. And so I was 13 uh, when I finally did it. So it was a long time. Right, right. Um, Okay, uh, this question um, to uh, Mr. Tim Thackeray, I know your story. Um, the question was, how did you get to where you are today? It's a pretty broad question, but I assume they, they, they see you as somebody who has uh, done a lot, come a, a long way. How would you say you got to where you are? Yeah, uh, I think how I got here, and if you know my story, I was an athlete, and I wasn't particularly a good athlete. I uh, unlike Steven, so Steven was on the national team at so young, he was 17 on the adult team where his mom had to sign his liability waivers. So I still think it's, I'm 40, I still think it's funny, right? <laughs> that athlete, from 15 to 17, I lost every single match, my first fight at states, at nationals, at US Open, like first round. I wasn't that athlete, so I had to really uh, dive into training and try and understand it on a little deeper level than people that maybe are talented had to. Uh, from there, I got as an athlete, then they start helping people, same thing, they start getting results, they start coaching. And I looked back on my career and I saw that I did pretty good. I, I won the Pan American Games, I got a bronze medal at the World Championships, but I didn't ever make the Olympics and I really wanted to. So I started looking at, well, I didn't learn this part till I was 26. I didn't learn this till I was towards the end of my career. And I thought, man, if I would have had these things when I was 16 or 17 or 18, where would I have gotten? So now I'm on a mission to help give other athletes these tools outside of Taekwondo to improve their mobility, improve their speed, help you like Yvette, help you kick strong like Steven, help you be accurate like Claire, help you be snappy like Johnny, these other parts. So that's how I ended up here. And you help one person, like Steven was my actually one of my first two people I ever worked with this way remotely. You help someone and then someone sees him do good and then does everything else. Someone else comes and they go, well, can, you, can you help me? So it was really organic. There was never a plan to do it, just trying to help my friends. That's great. Thank you, sir. Um, this is a, a great question that applies 
uh, to parents that aren't uh, in martial arts, but this was their first class, or you know, in case of uh, Yvette's sister, their first class, um, and to, to people practicing Kunze and to those who are fighting at the high level uh, or competing at the same level as, as the panelists here. How do you handle all the pressure? Who wants to put up their hand first and take that one? I know all you have have an answer to it for sure. I want to see who puts up their hand first. All right, Mr. Stephen Landon. I gotcha. Um, so one of the best pieces of, of advice I ever got from sports psychologists was uh, when you're dealing with nerves and things like that and uh, the pressure of competition. First of all, remember, the pressure doesn't actually exist. It's all pressure you're putting on yourself, right? But more importantly, this kind of feeds into being nervous. We, you just need to remember, first of all, we all get nervous. I get nervous, Yvette gets nervous, Johnny gets nervous, Claire gets nervous, Tim doesn't, he's a sociopath, that's a different issue. But uh, the best piece of advice I ever got was that treat your nerves like, wa like waves in the ocean. There's gonna be peaks and there's gonna be valleys, but what you have to understand is it's the ocean. It's gonna be there regardless. So there's no point in fighting it, right? So as long as you kind of take that approach, I've never had too much trouble keeping nerves under control. That's great. Uh, Miss Young, uh, someone asked you specifically also answer this question. What do you, how do you deal with it? I like that visual, Mr. Stephen Landon, that's, uh, uh, you know, visuals are great ways to reinforce uh, lessons because our minds are, uh, some, a lot of people's minds are very visual in their learning. You. So if you, if you uh, treat it like a wave, uh, as he said, then uh, that can help you deal with it. Miss Young, how about yourself? How do you deal with the pressure at the world level that you've been at? Well, you know what? I actually learned a, it, from my sister, my older sister, Yvonne, in <laughs> her first Taekwondo class. She, I used to talk with her about, uh, you know, me being nervous before a fight. And she was like, you know what? It's okay to be nervous, but think about it. There's two people in a fight. Both of you are nervous. And your worst enemy is yourself because you bring pressure upon yourself. Pressure is just not, you know, you, you think about it and then you build it up in your mind by yourself, right? Just as uh, Master Steven said. And just think about it as a way to, you know, be more calm. Think about your other opponent feeling the same way as you, you know, like you don't have to be nervous. Like I try not to be nervous, but my hands shake. I, my heart beats fast. I sweat. Everybody's nervous. But think about it as two people in the fight. Both of you guys are nervous. If one of you is more calm, you'll overcome it. Very good. Perspective, uh, as Master Young said, is also important. We get stuck in our own uh, mind thinking, but if you step back and look at the whole picture, that also helps uh, with you dealing with nerves. Uh, Master Claire, and um, uh, I'll ask you first, how about yourself? When you're stepping onto the mat, everyone's watching you, looking, literally looking for you to make mistakes. Um, how do you deal with that pressure? Um, I'll, I mean, again, everybody gets nervous. I get very nervous as well. And um, I think it took me a couple of years, and I've been competing for many, many years, um, to realize they're all nervous. I'm nervous. We're all in the same boat here. Um, but with Pumsa specifically, and I'm sure Sparring is that way too, is when you step on the mat, you got to be on, period. You cannot show that you're nervous because if you let your nerves take over, not only will you make mistakes, and trust me, I've made my mistakes mm -hmm. in my career and I've learned from them, but it's really then to realize, you know what, at least from the outside, I want to make sure I look as calm as possible because then that's going to infiltrate my inner being and I'm, it's going to calm me down a little bit. And just to take a deep breath, rely on my training and um, just to stay strong. And I've had, you know, I've had competitions where afterwards they're like, wow, you look so confident. But I remember feeling like this and like this. And it's just part of the game. And, and I think it makes it exciting as well. Absolutely. That's, that's a very good point. You know, there's a saying that says, look good, feel good, right? If you put on a smile, right? If you just put up your shoulders, immediately your confidence level goes up, right? And this applies to everything, not just uh, sport food, say, or sparring but just regular life. Uh, you walk into a job interview of your class, you put on that smile and, and, and bring up that chest, uh, that confidence just comes in. That's a great point, man. Uh, Master Johnny, uh, what about yourself? How do you um, uh, deal with some of these things that uh, these, your other fellow athletes have been dealing with? Uh, I think for me, it's a, a little different from any other Pumse athlete just because uh, I have a sparring background. So I, start, I consider myself a sparring athlete. Uh, so warming up, um, you know, I'm getting pumped up. I'm listening to music, rock music, um, getting pumped up. So it's a little different than uh, when I'm at a 
Pumse Championship where I see, uh, you know, everyone calm, stretching out, uh, making sure their, their, their form and their bodies and uh, on point for their Pumse. But me, I'm running around, jumping around, just like I'm getting ready for a sparring match. That's what really kind of calms me down. Right. Yeah, and that, that's an important point, right? Um, you know, we learn this as we get a little bit older is that everyone's got something different that makes them calm. Uh, for some people, it's listening to music. Uh, for some people, it's being quiet. Um, so uh, figuring things out, if you're just new, um, or even if you're seasoned and you have, still haven't figured it out, try new things. Try listening to upbeat music. Try listening to classical music. Uh, try putting in earplugs. Um, you know, I think that's important to, uh, to always learn, to always be a learner. Uh, everybody in this group, uh, they learn all the time. I see them uh, uh, either joining other classes, and these guys are literally the best in the world, but they are still constantly learning. Um, so that's also an important lesson. Uh, Coach Tim, uh, what about yourself? Uh, sir, uh, uh, frame me up again with the... Yes, the question was, oh my gosh, uh, the, the question is how did you, and it's a little bit out of, now you're a coach, I guess we'll go back to your athlete times, and then maybe how do you tell your athletes, how do they get uh, uh, the, the nerves out from when it comes to competition? Yeah, that, uh, for me, there's what we call an ideal performance state. Mm. Right. Uh, we need some nerves to do well. So you don't, having no nerves, you will fall flat. Think about any time you've been too cocky. I got this, oh, he's not good, I'm gonna fight. And you end up losing, right? You end up losing. Uh, and I've had it happen many a time to me when I was younger, part of probably why my parents started me back over at White Belt, right? <laughs> too, too big an ego, no room for new knowledge to come in, right? And then same time, if you're too nervous, that you're, uh, I didn't, I haven't trained in six months. Well, you should be nervous. You haven't done the work. So now you're inhibited and you're too there. So we need both. I need you to do all the work to be ready. And so you're confident, you know, you can do it, but then be on that nervous part to where when someone moves, you react, right? Too nervous, you either jump too soon, like uh, Miss Yvette does her footwork and you're like jumping. You don't want that, but you don't want to be like, it's a fake. She's going to, it's because she's going to fake me. That's too cocky, right? We have a balance there. So for everyone finding that is there, our nerves are telling our body we are getting ready for a fight, right? So uh, think about it. The last thing I'll say on it, uh, out in nature, right? If we're going to get into a fight or a lion's going to chase us, we don't know that on June 1st, a lion is going to chase us. It just happens. But in fighting, we say June 1st, we're going to fight. And so now it builds up all these endorphins that would just save our life to run away from the lion or run away from danger are slowly building up. So now it's in our brain. So it's a different scenario, but our body's doing the right thing. So you don't want to not have nerves. You want to, you have to change how you view them, but that is your body getting ready. And that's how I try and reframe it. That is them having their body be ready. Now go do your work and out in the ring, it's going to go off. Absolutely. That's amazing. Um, to be respectful of our instructor's time. We only have a few more minutes, so I'll ask one more question for each of you. Um, and I think this is a good one. Uh, as again, it applies to all athletes, parents, young kids going to school. How do you cope with failure after a, a match or, or, or an event, or maybe a, you know, a result in, in your, your school, uh, you know, a presentation or, 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 or a test? So maybe we'll start with uh, Master John. How did you do, how do you deal and cope with failure? Sure. Um, so I think everybody's human, right? So uh, failure is not a good feeling, right? Failure sucks. Um, but um, looking at it big picture, uh, failure will actually help you uh, motivate yourself to become a better, whatever you're doing, an athlete, or um, if you're doing a presentation, like you said, or maybe a choir concert or something like that. If you uh, failed, that should help you train even harder, motivate you more uh, to do better and be more prepared for uh, your next match. So I think it as, uh, as a positive for sure. Thank you, sir. Ms. Claire? Yeah. Thank you, Johnny. You kind of said what I was preparing to say in my mind. <laughs> but, um, you know, just a funny story. I was, we were holding a tournament and I had a dad come up to me and complain. My son didn't get first place. He got third place. And he was really disappointed. And he observed and he saw the situation as a failure. And I said, listen, you put yourself out there to be judged. It's a tournament. This is part of the game. Um, and, and you've gained more than you've lost. I mean, this is really not a failure. It's you've trained, you've prepared, you've all, and like everybody got on the same boat. And so for you to be doing that is an accomplishment, not a failure. So I don't really like the term failure because 
every situation is a learning lesson. Mm. Um, I had a moment years ago when I was at world championships and I made a mistake on stage and it cost me my medal. Um, that was, I think, 2006 or 2007. And so it's way back, but you know, and I, and of course I didn't feel good about it, but guess what? I literally, I trained, 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 and it motivated me to just push harder and, and just to let people know, listen, gold medal or not, I'm, I'm not done yet. I have more to give. So it's an exciting situation. And so let's not think of it as fail. Let's think of it as opportunity. Absolutely. And you, you'll notice one thing, everybody, uh, and Miss Yvette, uh, I'll, I'll pick you next. Um, so you're ready. Uh, one of the things you'll notice from the mindset of these uh, these amazing instructors is how they frame things. How they frame things it means how you look at things. How you frame things and how you look at things is so, so important and, and why these uh, guys and girls are, are here where they're at. Um, so I encourage you, um, people who are, are, are listening, to notice that that's a key key uh, theme that's, uh, that's being uh, applied to the way they think at things, uh, think about things. Uh, Ma'am, Miss Yvette Young? How do you deal with failure? How do you cope with failure? Well, first thing is I, I don't think about it as a failure. I, I think that, you know, in life you can always do better. I, I think of it as a lesson learned and a lesson that you can look back on and, you know, try to improve. So if like, you know, I used to lose like fights and uh, as I was a child and I'd cry about it and, you know, pout and everything, but there's no use in, in doing that because without going back and, and looking over your fight and thinking about all the things that you did, um, not wrong, but that you didn't do enough of, or you didn't you know, train enough of this or that, or more focus, it's not failure to me. It's just an opportunity, like Master Claire said, um, for you to get better and to you know, succeed. Yeah, and so these, uh, we'll, we'll have two more, uh... Uh, last two instructors answer these, this, the same question. And I prefer if maybe, sir, um, uh, Coach Tim and, and, and Mr. Stephen uh, sharing a story on, on, on failure, because I think that also resonates a lot with folks. Um, so, you know, you've seen a lot of these themes that uh, your, your colleagues have shared. Uh, can you share an example of, of failure? You touched on one, Coach Tim, uh, and, and maybe let people know how that failure brought you to where you're standing right now. Uh, absolutely. So, um, as I mentioned, I was a fairly good athlete as a younger kid, but I didn't know like fighting Taekwondo is like the modern sport of it. So I had a lot of really bad habits, but cause I was kind of a good athlete, I could get by. And what happened was all of a sudden you get a little older and people now know what they were doing. So because I was too pig headed uh, to start, I was doing what I always did. And I hit this part where I couldn't win matches anymore. And it looked like for me, again, like I said, 15 to 17 years old, I lost every single match for two years. And it's not a metaphor, not I came in second place there. I mean, the first round of states, junior, senior, I, I was fighting, I couldn't win. And everyone says, oh, that's horrible, right? So what did it do for me? Well, I got desensitized to losing. I could go out and start training things I needed to do mm -hmm. to get better as a senior. I knew my goal, I wanted to be on the adult national team. I wanted to be a uh, world medalist. I had all these big goals I wanted to do. And I could go out and I could start trying some of the drills my coaches would do for me without having to hold on to, I got to win, but I got to win. Well, winning doesn't tell us what to do. Winning's the outcome. So we have to focus on the input. So for me, I started focusing more on the input of my training. It made me really fall in love with training. It's my favorite part of the day still. And not, oh, well, I'll enjoy this if I get some external feedback. I mean, I get a medal in six months, then I'll love it. Then I'll think I'm okay. Then I'll think I'm a good person. No, 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 no. I'm good because I love training. I get to be with my friends and some of these people on the call are some of my best friends in the world. So I get to do this with them. Not because, oh, we'll get a thousand people. And we get, because we get to share our passion for this. So it really made me get really clear at a younger age of that. And then when I lose, we come back and I go, okay, cool. I, I learned this. I learned this. And so what happened was the other people that were on, say, the junior national team that now got more attached to winning at a little older age, they couldn't change. Right. And I realized that my game was to change. And I can change now. And I can keep changing. And I think that's back to the other question, how did I get here, is I've kind of been able to change what I do, whether I'm a coach or I'm in Taekwondo. I run a martial arts school now. I'm online doing strength and conditioning. Like I'm not as attached to I'm this I'm someone I'm gonna win this Saturday. Like it's gonna work out. 
you know? Right. I think everyone here has that same story. You hear how Yvette said that, you hear how Claire said that, that these things gave us info to move forward, not that it's finite. I think that's is the end, it's not. Right, so I think that the key theme I picked up there is adaptability, right? Is just this ability, and, and what we're doing now with the, with the coronavirus being adaptable and even adapting now as we get more information on what to do next, it's mm -hmm. a new world. And so just constantly learning from whatever happened, right or wrong, and adapting, uh, again, that's another champion's mindset that applies not just on the mat, but in your school uh, as well, or in your work or in your personal relationship. Uh, Master Stephen Lamb, you got the last word here before we, we sign off. Um, and before we do that, I just got word uh, by just by your guys' amazing teaching, you raised another $2,000 somehow. Um, so we're awesome. at 7000 uh, Yeah. That's amazing. Uh, thank you, guys. I guess people saw value in what you taught, and they just wanted to give money to the cause. So thank you, uh, everybody. Um, so, sir, Mr. Stephen Landon, your thoughts on failure, and uh, what, how did you cope with it? Uh, I'm, I'm glad I got to go last for this because I'm a kind of <laughs> on everybody. Um, as far as like ultimate failure story, to put it in perspective, I lost my first match at the Olympics, right? Like not only did I lose my first match at the Olympics, I was winning until the last five seconds. Like if, if there's somebody that can tell you about deal, dealing with disappointment or failure, it's me and the priority that fortunately I, I tell people because uh, right after that, you know, uh, journalists and stuff like that come stick microphones in your face. And, oh my God, how are you feeling? And we've all seen that interview where certain athletes just like lose it. And they're like, oh my God, this is the worst thing that ever happened. And it was like, I was upset for about five minutes. That's what I tell people. And I kind of get the, what? Like, it was the Olympic though. Um, fortunately, I had the benefit of being surrounded by really great athletes like Tim. Tim was my mentor whenever I first made the team, whenever my mom was signing my contract. Uh, and one of the things that everybody all, that great athletes hammer home is you can't control results. Like, who knows what the chest guard's doing? Who knows? You could show up and just get beat. Like, that happens. Like, I lost at the Olympics. Where we keep from going insane is when we reframe it, like everybody said, and start focusing on our effort. We can't control results, but we can't control our effort. I tell people I slept like a baby that night after the Olympics because I literally gave it everything I got. And you know what? I haven't had a bad night's sleep about it since because, like I said, I'm focused on the effort. And as long as you're focused on what you can control, uh, the, rest of, the rest of it will fall in line eventually. Wow, amazing. Such great lessons here, guys. Um, <laughs> light drop, yes, sir. Uh, there you have it, everyone. The world's largest Taekwondo class is uh, officially over. We will do a selfie, so everyone will get on gallery view. We'll post and we'll do your, your best stance, um, and we'll, we'll take that photo for, for Instagram. So Master Emerson, if you can get ready with your screenshot there. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll, uh, I'll, I'll let you guys know when we're ready for that the stance. Um, we'll post this video online. We'll email you the link. Please share it uh, with everybody else. Uh, be proud of yourself. You did a great thing today. Um, and we'll share with you the final numbers. All right, guys, you guys ready for your selfie mode? All right, let me get into mine here. Comb your hair. Oh, Coach Tim's got one. Oh, yeah, nice force stance from Steve. I think that's what that is. Okay. Ready? <laughs> Three, two, one. All right. <laughs> Fantastic, guys. That was great. Um, all right, Emerson, let's end this broadcast. And then speakers, if you can stay, that'd be fantastic. Thanks, everyone. And thanks, everyone, for participating. Great job, everybody.